Well, time now to turn our attentions to the 14 Irish contenders for this year's Star Sports Greyhound Derby. And uh, maybe a smaller team than we're used to, but it's certainly full of quality. And indeed, the first two in the betting lofty for the Irish. They are indeed, yeah. Well, new in session has been the big gamble of the race when it was uh, said that Graham Holland was bringing a squad over and he was uh, the first one mentioned. And then the fact that he got knocked out in the first round of the Irish derby and then missed the plate. It was a few alarm bells were rung and then when he was decided it was good coming over, he was still 33-40 to 1. That price has obviously tumbled right down. He's now the short one. He's 9 to 1 favourite with us. Again, mainly on liability. He's not the worst loser in the book by a long way, but, he, but he's certainly a loser. You know, he's a dog who's... All his form really is around Clonmel. I mean, only Claire's Rocket's gone quicker around Clonmel of, of dogs. But, you know, look, I mean, you've got to respect what Graham does and the fact is like, he's brought that squad over. Obviously, new in Taylor won the derbies, the Irish derbies, so for the same connections. And again, you've got to respect what Graham brings over. I mean, he's also brought last year's Irish derby winner over um, Lenston Bocco. I think he's got a horrendous draw, personally, in his, in his first round heat, Lenston Bocco. There's pace both sides of him. You've got Bramble Reggie, who will definitely go up outside. I mean, Amka Rofu wouldn't be in the class, but from the produce stakes, but he's got plenty of early pace up the inside, and he's not been really far at all for me, Lenson Bocco, when he was running over in Ireland in the derby, went out in the second or third round and, and didn't look the same dog as last year. But, you know, for me, I think he's a, he's a little bit maybe of a force price in the market. Uh, Phil, I know you think that they have seven or eight that could win yep. the Irish, but again, you know, at nine to one, you're in session, you, you can find faults with the dog, perhaps. Well, I, I'm not going to say I find faults with the dog himself, because I think he's an exceptionally talented greyhound, but yeah, whether he's the Derby favourite in my eyes or, or a greyhound who's going to be absolutely suited to Nottingham, only time's going to tell because he's had the trial um, and he didn't set the world alight, but then a lot of the Irish greyhounds will improve for those trials. Um, I think he's, as, as, as Lofty said, part of the price is on, on reputation and on money already seen, uh, and at 33 to 1, he would have been certainly a, a, a decent bet. I think, as you say, there's 14 Irish trained runners, there's a lot of greyhounds on the English side who are probably really Irish runners but they've joined English trainers um, but uh, of these 14 I think there's a, there's a good percentage that are capable of winning don't forget they had four finalists last year uh, and the first three home uh, were Irish trained runners so they do find a way of rising to the top uh, and I, I could go down the list uh, yeah I, I would probably sidestep Lentz and Bocco as well for the reasons already been mentioned not because he's at anything other than the exceptional talented greyhound but um, I don't think there's any value or juice in his price and, and the draw as well worries me I think I think there's a good bet in, to be had somewhere around Call of Annie Chick, uh, the bitch who, who runs in that same heat as Lenson Bocco for, for Noel Hare. Um, I think she's exceptionally talented. Um, she's very strong. Uh, she gallops and gallops and gallops. And I think for, for markets like the top bitch or to maybe to reach the final uh, as a bitch, uh, any, any markets around those, um, I think she's a, a real player. Um, although she's only 25 or 20 to 1 to, to win the competition. So... Um, she'll be favourite for most of those. She, for me, is, is a player, definitely. Um, if you like new in session, um, I would suggest having a look at his brother, Doolin Duke, who runs for, uh, for Pat Buckley. They were very similar as, as youngsters. I think they're former Clonmel. You know, they went off joint favourites in the final there. Um, he's joined Pat and, and maybe took a while to settle in, but a recent run at Shelburne was, was top draw. He's around, uh, Lofty tells you, 33. 33, yeah. Yep. yeah he, he, for me, is a player. And Graham's squad really strong, but don't write off last year's uh, Dog Wolf. Um, mm. He's a big price. Uh, he's, yes, he's older. I think that price, maybe the ages, it reflected in that. But we've had a lockdown. There's, there's been a lack of racing. He, he's not over, over tested the dog. Uh, and he's got so much speed. So for me, again, he's another value price dog. Yeah, he impressed so much in the first round of last year. <laughs> Lofty, what was that face for? No, I just saw it, yeah. I mean, a lot of people <laughs> thought the dog had gone on. You know, he, come and yeah. he did win at Shelbourne Park on the um, Derby final night. But yeah. uh, I know a few of the Irish boys who we I speak to quite you know, close to follow the Shelbourne form much closer than my eyes. And they were pretty convinced the dog had completely gone. Um, he is rising four now, as, as Phil mm. alluded to. And again, I think he's got a horrible draw in the first round. Mm. With, with speed either side of him. So, yeah, of, of Graham's ones, if he won, I'd be least keen about, to be honest. But as you, as you said, I haven't seen him in the first round last year when he, he beat the boat as well, Cat. Yeah. He every inch of Derby winner. And he had his um, on the moment in the second round with that check at the third bend and nobody still has worked out what happened. And yeah, yeah there'd be bigger, the better ones of Graham's are going to be interesting, I think, than, than Wolf, to be fair. He is an interesting runner, though. Uh, Patrick, what do you make of the Irish team? There's a couple that you like that, that haven't actually been mentioned. Yeah, I, I like Black Paddy Shield for, for Graham. He won the the, the, the consolation derby at um, 
Shelbourne Park, he's very strong running as well. Um, I like Glenn Garbell as well. He's, he's sort of middle to wide. Um, he's got great early pace. He runs great, great bends at Shelbourne Park. If he can do that, the same at, at Nottingham, he's a runner. Um, yeah, there's a few of those spirit. He's, he's a fast dog as well, I think. But yeah, th- th- there's a few dogs there, like new in session. He's, he's, he's a very fast dog, like Lofty and said and everything. But all, all his form is at Clonmel. Whenever he went to Shelbourne Park and everything, he, he never really transformed that transformed that form to there and if we can do it at Nottingham time will tell. Absolutely uh, we are going to claim Kilara Icon as uh, being an English runner uh, now in the hands of Peter Hander but of course Irish Derby finalists just come over to uh, Peter's kennel uh, he said that he's still barking with an Irish accent but he's still English we're claiming him um, he likes a tough 500 meters I think he could be quite suited to Nottingham. Yeah, his pace at Shelbourne down the back straight was, was superb, wasn't he? He was coming home as strong as Eddie, and he had to be placed in the Irish Derby final. I think he was fourth in, in the final in the end, albeit it obviously was an unfortunate first bend there. Um, yeah, he, he's a dog you, you wouldn't rule off going a long way, and Nottingham might suit him, Pat, but obviously, you, you, I mean, you train top class greyhound. You think you want to be a, a, a dog that can get yourself near the front by the third bend there? Is that I, right? I definitely do think at Nottingham. If you look at most races there, whoever sort of gets around that third bend in front is normally the winner. Mm. Um, it's, it's not the easiest place to come from behind. Um, you need a dog who stays, of course, you know, but he, he could be a dog who, who can tuck in behind around the first two bends. He can go in sort of fifth in the first bend, then come out third because some dogs move, have the tendency to move off there. So he, he could be a runner, but I'd rather have dogs who can do it from the front. I think we should say as well, Patrick, fair play to the Irish trainers that have come over. Obviously, circumstances oh, yeah. are quite difficult. They have to stay for the whole duration of the competition without really yeah. being able to go home. So the likes of Pat Buckley and Mickey yeah. Holland, it's, it's a big ask, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big them? ask. And it puts a lot of strength on, on the kennels at home mm. because the show still has to keep on there. And yeah, fair dues to them for doing it all. Absolutely. And also, I wanted to say it's good to see John McGee coming over as well. Mm. You know, John's part of my... Growing up in ground racing, you know, we're obviously going right back to hit the lid we was involved with, and you know, my formative years in the sport, um, yeah, he was he was incredible. His his, his talent with the dog, um, and, you know, he's good company as well. He's I think he's bringing three over, and one of those in particular, if you turn to Logan, uh, you wouldn't dismiss uh, in the slightest. I mean, he's got absolute burst in pace um, up, and uh, he showed up really well in the heats of the Irish Derby. Um, yeah, he's I think he's a really nice nice dog, and yeah, he could go well for John in the competition. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Katinda Logan is 33 to 1 with Star Sports. That's uh, a little summary for you of the uh, 14 Irish runners as it stands at the moment that are heading to Nottingham at the weekend.